averaging 20 points a game. Temple coach John Chaney has a new book on the market, and his attitude is apparently all right, with 199 wins and eight-plus seasons on Broad Street. And one player who helps keep that attitude on the bright side is senior guard Mark Macon, the leading scorer in Temple history. College basketball. Tonight, from McGonagall Hall in Philadelphia, the Owls of Temple take on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. This Atlantic 10 Conference game is being brought to Hall in Philadelphia, where tonight, Atlantic 10 Conference action hits the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers against the Owls of Temple. Hi, everybody. I'm Fred White, or analyst tonight, Ed Stefanski. Good to see you again. Oh, it's great seeing you. I'd love to see a basketball game, too. Uh, we might have a good one here this evening. This could be an interesting matchup. Especially, Rutgers is hurting a little bit, but they're coming in, and they always play Temple well. Tough place to play, though. I mentioned a moment ago that the one name that Bob Wenzel's been able to write down in the scorebook every night is Keith years and that's been a good name for him to write in there and he's glad he has him in there averaging 20 points again also leads the team with rebounding at 10 rebounds a game he's a man they have to go to Keith Hughes can take his game outside also but he laces him up every night and Bob Wenzel knows he can mark it in the lineup and the Knights are beginning to heal up a little bit they're going to get Duncan back at a guard spot tonight well Earl Duncan missed the last five out of six games he played some against Delaware he's coming back they said he's about 80 percent ready they need him tonight to penetrate the zone that matchup zone of Temple and when when he penetrates, they need the outside shooting of Donnell Lumpkin. Loves to play against Temple, loves to shoot the ball from distance, so three-pointers will be his game tonight. And there's Bob Wenzel along the front of his bench. Let's talk about this Temple ball club a little bit. You know what, it's really interesting. Most coaches would like their freshmen to play like seniors, and here at Temple, with Mark Macon, they, they got a senior, they just hope he can play like a freshman again. Well, his freshman year, he was just magnificent, but he had Howard Evans at the guard with Nate Blackwell, two great guards who got in the balls in the right spots. So this year, he's playing a little bit better shooting the basketball because he's getting cheap shots. When they play man-to-man, -man, he gets some layups. That pads the average, and all great shooters need a couple easy shots. And there's a new face on this Temple ball club, their point guard, Vic Karstarfin, and he may be responsible to an extent for that better shooting. He has a big play with the basketball at all times. He's taken over the role for Michael Harden at the point guard spot. Shoots the ball well also, so teams can't double and triple team him like they did last year. Now they can go to Vic or Starth and shoot the basketball. They'll double team making, but not as easy as they had last year. Again, Atlantic 10 Conference basketball coming your way from McGonagall Hall in Philadelphia tonight. Our matchup, the Owls of Temple against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, and we'll be back to meet the starting lineups right after this. Huh? Let's meet the starting lineups. First for Rutgers, at a forward position, a senior, six feet, eight inches tall from Connerette, New Jersey, number 31, Keith Hughes. The other forward, the sophomore, six feet, eight inches tall from South Brunswick, New Jersey, number 44, Donnell Lumpkin. At the center spot, the senior, six feet, ten inches tall from Peekskill, New York, number 54, Brent Dabbs. At the guards, the senior, six feet, four inches tall from Los Angeles, California, number three, Earl Duncan. And at the other guard, a sophomore, six feet, four inches tall from Morrisville, Pennsylvania, number 24, Mike Jones. The head coach of the Scarlet Knights in his third season is Bob Wenzel. And for the Temple University Owls. At a forward position, a junior, six feet, eight inches tall from Philadelphia, number 24, Mick Kilgore. Taylor forward to junior, six feet, nine inches tall from Atlanta, Georgia, number 30, Mark Strickland. At the center spot, a junior, seven feet tall from Washington, D.C., number 35, Donald Hodge. At the guards, a sophomore, six feet tall from Camden, New Jersey, number three, Vic Karstarfin. And at the other guard, a senior, six feet, five inches tall, from Saginaw, Michigan, number 12, Mark Macon. The head coach of the Temple University Owls in his ninth season is John Cheney. The officials for this evening's game with the ball is John Cheney, Cheney trying for his 200th victory at the Temple Helm here tonight. We're set to play basketball. Temple and Rutgers will be back with a tip-off right after you watch this. 
At one time, Rutgers led this series 9-4 to until John Chaney took over here at Temple. Temple, as you see, has won the last three. The last Rutgers win was a great semifinal win in the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament at the Palestra here in Philadelphia. A tangle for the basketball off the tip. And it's going to be Rutgers' ball that starts the proceedings. Donald Hodge went after it and tipped it out of bounds. Fred, the key will be how Rutgers will attack the matchup zone defense of Temple and John Chaney. They have to get good shots either from the outside or work it inside. Skip pass to start the attack right there. Jones to Duncan. Duncan got in 28 minutes in the night's last game after missing five of those six contests with the ankle. Duncan kicks it down in the corner. Lumpkin lets one go and gets a three from the deep corner. And what a start now for Rutgers, a start they needed, Ed. And what they did is Earl Duncan showed the penetration. Two Temple players covered him. Lumpkin wide open in the outside. Here's one for you. Lumpkin's tried 61 shots this year. 38 of them have been from three-point range. He's never seen a shot he doesn't like. Turn around. Strickland banks it in. Mark Strickland knocks it down, and it's a one-point lead for Rutgers in the early going. One thing Temple had problems last year, everybody sagged in on Donald Hodge. Strickland shows some offense. That'll open it up for the big guy, Donald Hodge, in the middle. A patient attack. Lumpkin again. That time can't knock it down. But strong in the middle is Dabbs. He takes it back up and scores. Brent Dabbs, a transfer from Virginia. He'll show the point on this pressure now. They're just trying to show Temple a different look. Temple will not attack the pressure most of the time. Just try to beat it and set up. Macon picks up the double team and the basketball. Car Starfin now to Kilgore. Oh, what a talented, versatile player Kilgore has been for this Temple team. He can do so many things. He, he has some great games for Temple, and then sometimes you don't know where he is. I'm sure John Cheney would like him to come out strong early against Rutgers. There's Macon blocked off the baseline by Hughes. And Macon very calmly sends it back outside. Now Carr Starfin short with a try and the rebound taken off the floor by Keith Hughes for Rutgers. Lumpkin fake and the shot from the baseline. He's taken three and hit one of them. The tip try won't go. Hughes is strong in there and knocks it down. Stick back by Keith Hughes and a good start for Rutgers. Temple was worried about Keith Hughes and Brent Dabbs on the boards and right away and there's a turnover against the 2-2-1 press. Jones with the steal. Macon shuts him down but they've got Hughes all alone near the corner for a three and it's good. Rutgers might have just come out and said hey we've been hurt all long let's just go out and have some fun we may not be ready but they're coming out loose as a goose here in the first half and a turnover no hodge with a great save picked up by macon and we're going to have a foul call nope no whistle in their last game played extremely well against the University of LaSalle. Then they played University of Pennsylvania the game before only had 16 points at halftime. Offense was a problem. It wasn't Saturday night against LaSalle. Temple attacking that zone rather tentatively at the moment. Car Starfin and Kilgore are playing catch right in front of the bench. Just four seconds on the shot clock. They've got to launch it and they don't. They lose it out of bounds. And Rutgers really giving Temple Collins in the early going here in McGonagall Hall. What a great start for a team on the road. See, John Chaney doesn't know what type of team he has yet. He said the kids play hard, but they're not playing the game very intelligently. Right now, they're having major problems on the offensive end. We've played three minutes. Rutgers up 10-2. to two. Hughes, Jones, and Hughes again from the top of the circle for three. And that one flies off the rim, rebounded by Kilgore. He's not afraid, Keith, used to go outside. He's 6'8 and a half, and he likes to shoot that three. Shooting 35% from three-point range. That time, they left Macon alone, and he buried the three. First points for Mark Macon. That's the problem when you have Mick Kilgore, Mick Perstarfin, and Mark Macon. The zone can't cover all three perimeter players. Macon was left open for the three. Lumpkin again. In and out. Boy, he buried his first shot, and now he's missed three straight. Dabbs saves the rebound. Knocked out of there by Karstarfin, and picked up by Duncan. I don't think Lumpkin passed the ball. Every time he catches, he's firing away. And I'm sure Coach Wenzel of Rutgers wants him to shoot the ball if he's open. He's been so streaky. Just 37% for the year. He gave it up that time. Because Hodge came out to cover him, and Duncan misses. Either side shooting it very well at the moment. 10-5 Rutgers at the moment. 16 minutes left in our first half. Got to try to get the ball into Donald Hodge, seven-foot center for Temple. Rutgers two for six from three-point range. Car Starkin is wide open, and the three goes down. Dick Car Starkin into three, and Temple right back within two points of Rutgers now. Car Starkin. Lumpkin one for five now, and we've got a foul. 
second. It's just catching and shooting. Instead of moving the basketball, get it inside, show a little inside game, then he'll get an easier shot and dump it back out. That's his first personal foul. There's Bob Wenzel making some substitutions, and we have time out here in Philadelphia with 15.37 left in our first half. Here by the Temple Owls, the three guards making with the ball. He'll hit Kilgore. He has the shot, but he says, let me give it up to my teammate, Dick Karstarthen, and the transfer from Cincinnati knocks it down for three. Rutgers came out stroking it pretty good, went up by 10 to 2, and now it's a 10 to 8 ball game. First half, Rutgers shooting 4 for 10 field goals, 2 for 7 on 3 points, 3 for 5 for Temple, and they've shot 2 out of 3 from the 3 point line. Rutgers has not been bashful, has it? Oh, no, Donnell Lumpkin is just firing away, and Bob Wentz will set him, sit him down a little bit. Hodge working in the lane and knocks it down to tie the ball game. First two points for Donald Hodge. And that was a good recognition by the Temple Owls. Rutgers went man to man. They found Donald Hodge. He has the height advantage over Brent Dabbs. Temple Owls run off eight straight points to tie the ball game at 10. Dabbs to Carter. Carter. It's a back looking down in the lane and can't find anyone. Duncan against Carr Starford. Backs him into the circle. From the deep corner, the shot won't go. Smith tried to get one down. With this lineup then for Rutgers, you have a shooting problem because they really don't have an outside shooter with Duncan, Carter, and Smith on the floor. Daryl Smith trying to battle back from a knee problem earlier this year. Duncan coming off the foot and ankle problem. Dabs had a foot problem early. Or ankle problem, I should say, earlier this year. Billy Hughes is the only one who has stayed healthy for this team, and Bob Wenzel will tell you that he's anxious to get them all back. Able to practice together. Look at Carr Starfin from downtown. Boy, he was almost on blood street when he launched that thing. Victor Starfin, he's not fastball. John Chaney gives it green light to any shooter out there if they're open. And you're open from that distance all the time. <laughs> Rarely are you covered out there. And Temple now on an 11-point run, up 13 to 10. Temple's first lead of the night. Duncan, we had a shot, turned it down, and now tried to give it up inside, and they're going to get it back, but they're fortunate. It's tough to do that with the zone collapse that far. Earl Duncan's got to shoot the jumper because there's no penetration, nowhere to go. Duncan will handle the inbounds pass to Carter. Carter's really slimmed up, it looks like. I think Earl Duncan got the weight. <laughs> Handled it off. Duncan from way above the circle now, and that one's good. A three for Duncan. And that's a good move by Earl Duncan. Remember, he's been hurt, ankle and foot problems. So it looks like he put on a little extra pounds, not being able to practice. But right there, he's got to shoot the basketball from outside. The Rutgers attack is coming from beyond the three-point arc here. They are really firing from three-point range. Game tied at 13 now. Hodge backs in against Neff. A great fake inside and coming over to help out and fouling him was Daryl Smith. Donald Hodge has terrific hands. The first thing for a big guy is obviously to catch the basketball. And watch the entry pass by Kilgore. He catches the ball. He senses the man on his back, makes the power dribble. Good step. Drops, pins, Brett Dabbs goes up, and he has to foul. It's a good big man move. Hodge, a seven-footer, a junior from Washington, D.C.'s Coolidge High School. And then I'm going to think when you're playing him, he just gets bigger as the game goes on. He's the kind of a guy that's just going to wear you down. Yeah, and he plays extremely hard at all times. He gets frustrated with himself because he likes perfection. But if they can get the ball inside, it's going to be a long night for the Rutgers big people. Four points now for Donald Hodge. He's had four double doubles this year, averaging 13 points and eight rebounds a game. Harder. Smith to Carter. Rutgers has not gotten anything inside. They have to get the ball inside a little bit, collapse that defense. Now they take it into Dabbs, and he's double-teamed and fouled. Carr Starfin on one side, Hodge on the other. As Hodge called for his first foul. Donald Hodge has his first personal foul, team's first. First team foul called against Temple tonight. Rutgers has been whistled for two. A 13, or rather a 15-13 lead for Temple here after being down 10 to 2 at one time. Carter, Nathan comes out to shut him down. Duncan, back in the corner. Dabs, the center, shoots in the corner and misses. Kilgore rebounds. A foul on Darrell Smith. He was pushing the little guy, Vic Carr Starfin. Carr Starfin, a transfer from Cincinnati. Been an active player out there so far tonight. Yeah, Vic Carr Starfin has done a lot for Temple, not only from shooting the ball from three point range, but he can penetrate, he can push the basketball. Great compliment to Mark Macon in the backcourt. Lumpkin is back in the ballgame. Darrell 
Smith has come out after committing his second foul. Now the foul. Gilgore took it in the lane. And Carter got it. What they did is they overload the side with three Temple players. Got the ball baseline. Nick Kilgore couldn't get it, but he got fouled because the Rutgers players are worried about the big guy, 35 Donald Hodge. Kilgore snuck along the baseline. If you're one of the Temple five on the floor, don't go looking over the bench because you're probably not coming out of the ball game anytime. Those starters. Well, here it is. Strickland, 34 minutes a game. Kilgore, 38. Hodge, 34. Karstarfin, 34. Macon, 39 minutes a game. Well, if you're one of the five, you're real happy. <laughs> if you're one on the bench, you'd like to get a few minutes. But John Chaney likes to play more like six guys. You'll see James Spears, the freshman, get off the bench once in a while. Michael Harden hasn't seen a lot of minutes, and he played all last year. Those guys on the bench must feel like a closer on the baseball team. Nothing going to happen until the late innings. Carter, the Duncan. What's interesting about that is all these players still stay out of foul trouble. It's hard to foul out of the Temple ball game. Strickland has done it once. Now Carr Starfin has his team out in open court. Macon. They really haven't looked to make him yet in this ball game. No, but Rutgers is all over. Duncan's cheating on him right now. Everybody's aware of where Mark Macon is on the floor. Back in the corner, Kilgore. Off balance, gets the foul, gets the shot. That thing rolled up and over the rim. Hughes is going to be called for his second personal foul. And Kilgore will go to the line to try to complete a three-point play. Let's give Nick Kilgore the shooting touch, the nice roll there. The junior forward, 6'8", out of Philadelphia, went to West Philadelphia High School, waited for Hughes to come back to try to get the foul. That's an NBA move to try to get the three-point opportunity, and he'll go to the line. Kilgore, two for two at the line. Make it three for three. He has run five straight points now. And Temple up 20 to 13. At one time down by eight. They stretched the lead to seven. They were down 10 to two. And now lead 20 to 13 with 12.08 left in the first half here. Jones to Duncan. And this is where the problem is on the offensive end. Dunk, when now uh, Lumpkin's back in the game, and let's see if Lumpkin can shoot the basketball. Weiler in the lineup now for Rutgers also. Outside it comes to Dabs. Lumpkin's going to try it for a three, and he is now one for six. He hit his first three, and he has missed five straight. I think Mark Strickland might have got a piece of that shot. Car Starfin. Love inside to Strickland. And Temple on a roll. They have gone up 22 to 13. You hadn't seen Temple till this game, Fred, but Karstorfen makes a big difference, doesn't he? Offensively sees the floor extremely well. Four points for Strickland, the 6'9 junior from Atlanta. And Temple down by eight at one point, now up by nine, and Karstorfen with a steal and a foul on Duncan. It is all going Temple's way right now. Well, Vic Karstorfen in this play used his quickness. We've seen his outside shooting three. We've seen a nice assist to Strickland. Now we use the defense. Rutgers got it started in great fashion, but they have hit the wall, and with 11-18 left in the first half, Temple's up by nine. How about the little no-look lob? Exactly. Look the defense right off. And that's a tough pass, getting up there by the basket where the big guy can catch it. Rutgers has taken 15 shots in this game, nine of them from three-point range, six of those nine by Donnell Lumpkin, who's connected on just one of those six. So that's part of the problem. That's the problem, the offense on the outside. Rutgers going man-to-man. -man. Watch Macon try to break down Mike Jones. Good matchup here. Well, he just pulled up and launched a three and stuck it. Mark Macon has hit two threes in the ball game. He has a half dozen points. He has shot 46% over his last nine games, and you can almost see his confidence coming back game by game, can't you? He's taking better shots, and part of the reason probably a big more starting in the backcourt, he has more confidence with him back there, taking better shooting opportunities. Jones fires over Macon and misses, and the rebound to Kilgore, and Temple out on the break, has Starkin on the wing. Kilgore on the baseline, Macon wide open for a three, and it's off the rim, and rebounded by Lumpkin for Rutgers. Notice Temple's zone, they're way flat here. They're going to give Mike Jones, the number 24 for Rutgers, a wide open shot. They're flat in the zone, playing in the middle. The outside's wide open, Rutgers got to score the basketball. Macon is back down in the lane, running the center. Now a foul ball, this ball comes down inside. 
John Chaney has been amazingly calm on the bench. One of his assistants, Jim Maloney, has been up a lot tonight, but John Chaney's just been kind of sitting there watching. This has been John's style for the first half normally. In the second half, the coat's <laughs> off, the tie's loose, and he's into it. So right now, he's very calm. Somebody hits his excited button about half time. Now he's on his feet. Yeah, he's, he's going to work David Hodge, the official. One problem with Rutgers, we said outside shooting is a major problem. Uh, Savage, Tom Savage, their senior, has left the team for personal reasons, and he was probably their best outside shooter. Team shooting 44% on the year. They kick it down inside to Dabbs, turns and shoots over Hodge, banks it off the glass and gets it. Brent Dabbs has four points. He took it right over Hodge that time. And it's a 10-point deficit for Rutgers right now. Clock ticking, 9.40 left in first half action here in McGonagall Hall. To Mika. Takes it right in against the big man Weiber and now gives it back outside. Kill Gore to Carr Starkin for another three-point shot. Rebounded by Rutgers. Jones will bring it up for the Scarlet Knights. Carter. Well, they got Weiber wide open on the baseline. And this is Charlie Wilder, the freshman from Haddonfield, New Jersey, just over the river here in Philadelphia. It's like a homecoming game for him. Gets two easy points. He's been a shot blocker for this Rutgers team. He has 14 blocks. He hasn't scored much. There's Macon, and Wilder went for the block and fouled him. Well, Mark Macon, with a strong drive, used his body to shield Charles Wilder as he went up and created the foul. That's his first personal foul. Seventh team foul on Rutgers. Temple's only committed two. Yeah, you know, Macon put his body in his arm, got away with a little push off with the left arm. But he's the senior All-American candidate, and they got the rookie or the freshman, Charles Wilder. Duncan's in, and Jones out now for Rutgers. I mentioned how many minutes these Temple people are playing. Mark Strickland is the only Temple player who has fouled out of the ball game so far this year. They just don't commit many fouls. Well, they play the matchup zone defense. They take angles away, passing angles. They try to play it. John Cheney's a believer in the matchup. Obviously, it's helped him. He's had a great winning percentage, almost 80% of his games. Doesn't like to go into man-to-man -man unless he has to. Well, Macon's an example. He's committed only 22 fouls all year at the top of that zone. And the problem is when you commit two, you're out of the game to the second half. So they do not want to commit two fouls. They know they're sitting next to John Cheney on the bench. Duncan. Carter. Macon shutting down. Wilder to Duncan. Down inside this time to Dabs, and we've got a push on Donald Hodge. But that'll be the second foul on Donald Hodge. Hey, watch this. Donald Hodge will be coming out of the game. Yep. Out he comes. Taking off his warm-up over there is James Spears, the 6'6 freshman from Concordville, Pennsylvania, Glen Mills High School. There's the push. Not much of a foul, but a good move by Rutgers to create something in the inside. They must create some inside movement to get the outside open for jump shots. Hodge sits down with four points and two rebounds. 8.47 left in the first half. That's just automatic with John Cheney in the first half, and you draw that second one. Donald Hodge has had that problem all year long in the first half, getting too early. Dabs takes advantage quickly of Hodge not being in there and scores two inside. Now 27-19, and Rutgers starting to move back in a little bit. Dabs is three for four from the floor. Ryder got a hand on it, couldn't hold it. No reason for that pass from Vic Carstark than trying to throw a 40 to 50 foot pass when his man was wide open across court. Just take your time. All they want to do is break the press and set up their set. Kilgore turns and looks down inside at Spears. Wider running Spears and they don't get the ball to him. Now Kilgore starts the drive and knocks it down off balance. Nick Kilgore has seven points. And Temple by 10 again with 8-11 left in the first half. but saved by Duncan. Carr Starkin got a hand on it out there. 29 on the shot clock. Lumpkin. So he wants to fire that ball. It's knocked out of his hands and taken away by Kilgore. Well, that dribble's not doing anything for him because he's just dribbling in front of him, not going anywhere with it. Down inside, Spears with a little soft hook. So Spears comes off the bench and gets in the pick up immediately for his first two points. Well, James Spears showed offense against LaSalle on Saturday night as Hodge picked up two early fouls, fouls and Spears came off the bench at 10 points in that game. Lumpkin from way outside, and he hits his second three of the night. Donnell Lumpkin now is two for seven from three-point win with six points on the night. 31-22 Temple. Macon has room in the lane. That's almost automatic. That's his first deuce of the night. He has 10 points. 
That's one thing. If Kepler will break your precedent, gets in the hands of Mark Macon, he'll make you pay for it with that quick penetration. Spears knocks the loose, picked off by Macon. Good hands in the lane from Spears. Kilgore, I didn't know whether to shoot it or pass it, and he came up short with a try. And now Duncan has it in open court for Rutgers. They're three on three. He gives it up to Carter right back in the lane, and who wants it? They got tangled up, dumped to Duncan and Dabs, and neither one of them got it. We're not making good decisions or good passes. Strickland. And a foul down low on Greg Carter. In the defense of Rutgers, you can just tell that Earl Duncan is not with it. He looks like he's limping when he's dribbling the basketball. He's not as quick with his ankle and foot injury as he normally is. First foul on Carter, 18 foul on Rutgers. Temple has committed just three fouls so far. Michael Harden now is going to come off the Temple bench and replace Fort Carr Sarpin. We talked about all the Temple players averaging well over 30 minutes a game, 34 the minimum. Michael Harden's playing 10 minutes a game. Spears is playing 12, and not much after that. They throw a temp misses. coaching staff can't come out and get better shots for the players. They're just not hitting it from the outside this evening. Andre Lamoro is in the game now for Rutgers. Spear shoots it over and misses. Lamoro has the rebound and is fouled from behind. The man that got him looked to be Mark Strip when he was behind him. And committed the personal foul. That is only the fourth foul on Temple here in the first half. Time out here. We have 6 5 left in our first half. Temple leading Rutgers by 11. Eric Leslie of Rhode Island has been voted the Atlantic 10 Conference Player of the Week. He averaged 23 and a half points a game last week against George Washington and Penn State. So Eric Leslie of Rhode Island, the A-10 Player of the Week. And speaking of Penn State, they just announced a score here. Penn State's ahead of St. Bonaventure, 40 to 14. <laughs> Didn't St. Bonnie's bring the offensive unit? Oh, no. Three-point shooting here tonight. Rutgers, four for 11. Temple, as you see, four for eight. Correct me on one thing. Strickland did not commit that last foul. James Spears did, so it's the first on Spears and not on Strickland. Temple up by 11. Rutgers basketball. Duncan steps by Mike Harden and misses the shot. And Strickland had a hand on the rebound and was knocked away from him and out of bounds to Temple. And one of the problems here, Rutgers is, is continually shooting the outside jumper. They're not a good outside shooting team. Temple normally can dictate the tempo to you. If you can get in a running match, they couldn't set up that zone defense that would be the Rutgers advantage, but they'll get back, set it up, and they're going to have major problems this evening breaking it down. One of the problems for Rutgers, one of their best shooters is sitting on the bench over there. He's now a coach, Rick Tattica. He can knock it down on the outside. Shot missed for Strickland that time and picked off the floor by Duncan. Duncan up for Rutgers to Jones on the wing. Great feet down inside. Dabs almost walked with it. Now the ball slapped in there and is taken away by Temple. Spears has it. <laughs> and you don't want to mess with James Spears. He was a football player all state from Glen Mills High School in Pennsylvania. Was going to go to West Virginia to play football. He's got a great body on him. Rutgers just 9 for 22 in this game. They've taken 11 of those 22 shots from three-point range. Temple 11 for 17, 4 for 8 from three-point country. Harden picks it up outside. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Now Kilgore. Strickland working and fires the turnaround jumper. It won't fall. Rebounded in there by Daryl Smith for Rutgers. 4.38 left in the first half. Rutgers within 11. And Duncan's going to pull up and take a little jumper. It won't fall. And Strickland high to clear the rebound. is fouled from behind by Jones. Not a good foul at all. And that's a frustration foul on Mike Jones. That Strickland clearly has the rebound. Rutgers is not getting any offensive rebounds at all. As you see Mark Strickland push it off a little bit. He'll go up high over everyone. And he clears house out with those elbows. And Jones frustrated foul. Just reaching around. Now Kilgore walks to the line. Three for three in the line with seven points. Rutgers hasn't shot a free throw yet. That's because all jumpers, they haven't gone inside at all. Temple, as you can see, has missed but once. 
It's not going to be Kilgore up there. Well, the, Mark Strickland's not that good of a free throw shooter, so they tried to put in Kilgore. He's shooting 50% from the free throw line. It's normally a technical foul trying to mislead this crew. So Strickland hits it. He has five points. Now John Chaney typically will take all the players off the line. Mark Strickland, you think with Mark Strickland on the line, you'd want some people there because he misses half of his shots right there. And that went right where a Temple player would have been. But he doesn't want anybody getting foul trouble. Andre Lamoureux picked off the rebound for Rutgers. Scarlet Knights down by a dozen. 4-21 left in the first half. Lamoureux, return feed, and a travel on the baseline. As Mike Jones got to the bucket, he was called for the walk. Seven turnovers now for Rutgers. Temple has only turned it over twice tonight. Boy, they, they're just always wizards in that department. Right, they're the top ten in the country every year with turnovers. They only have ten for the uh, game average this year, and that's even high for John Cheney. And they're plus four for game in that department. Martin off the target. Strickland tips it, keeps it alive. He's in the lane, off balance, and scores. And look at the bodies on the floor. Great work by Mark Strickland. He'll show you flashes of great athletic ability in there. That's what he has. He's an athlete. Loves to get up and down the floor. Can jump out of the building. And he can show glimpses of good offensive skills. 36-22. Campbell by 14. Their biggest lead of the night. And now a foul goes against the Owls down in the lane. Michael Harden commits his first foul. You saw the penetration by Earl Duncan. That's what they want to try to get. Time out here. We have 331 left in first half action. Temple up by 14. Near Rutgers with the ball down by 14. In the first eight minutes of this game, Rutgers did not have a turnover. They've had seven in the last nine minutes now. Lumpkin fires way back outside to Duncan. Keith Hughes has been on the bench for a long time yeah, for this Rutgers game. I don't know if he's hurt or it's just the coach's decision, but he's their leading scorer at 20 points a game, and he's been out for a long time. Duncan for three. That's a three point well, Duncan hits his second three-point field goal of the night. And obviously, Rutgers need some outside shooting. A little penetration to collapse in the zone. They're going to get it. They just have to hit them. Just tell you a story. Rutgers has five three-point field goals and five two-point field goals in this ballgame. They haven't gotten any easy shots against the zone, that's for sure. Now, Craig Carter is going to be whistled for his second foul. Tough matchup for Carter playing Mark Macon. Anyone that has to play man-to-man -man against Macon, normally people give double team and some help. Second personal foul. It'll be two shot fouls now for Wayne Temple Jones, for the rest of the first half. That's ten fouls. Whistled on Rutgers. Now Carter comes out of the Rutgers lineup. Yeah, I, I agree with what they're trying to do with the two shot foul. I'm not sure it's going to work for them. Oh, I hate this rule. I absolutely hate it on the tenth foul in college basketball. Now they get two shots instead of the old one on one. The one on one at the end of the game was so important. When you go to the foul line and you know you have two, the pressure is definitely off. And I don't think it's sped uh, speed up the games at all i haven't seen that at all i'm not i'm not sure it's going to work i admire the effort but how about mark macon's last four games against Rutgers? he's averaged 29 points over those last four ball games and he has so far in this one 11 in the first half mark macon this year has scored 26 points twice 25 points twice 22 points twice and had a 21 point ball game there's going to be a lot of coaches in the atlantic 10 who will miss him as a person but they won't <laughs> miss playing against him. no this kid is something special. A dozen points now for Mark Macon. And we still have 235, and that time Rutgers with the unforced turnover. Well, that was a mistake by Mike Jones, the guard, to give it up to Weiler, who's six foot nine and a half. He's not going to play handle the basketball. Temple up by 13, 227 left in the first half. Macon drops it down inside to Kilgore, who draws the double team, gives it up to Strickland, who slams it home. Everything is going right now for Temple because that was a shot that was just almost a throw by Strickland. The pass from Kilgore to Strickland. 15-point lead, the biggest of the night. Jones at the baseline, try to get it inside. Lamoureux knocked out of there. Now Lumpkin back inside to go. Lamoureux kicks it back out. Now Lumpkin back inside Lamoureux, and they got a walk. 
And right there, something that John Chaney doesn't like to do a lot, he showed a man-to-man -man defense right there. A little bit different, normally stays that matchup, showed some man-to-man, -man, and he's having success this year, showing man-to-man -man once in a while. And as you see, Bob Wenzel not happy with what's happening at McGonagall Hall this evening. Mystery right now is Keith Hughes. He sat down with 12 minutes left in the first half, has not come back in the ball game. And we can only wonder why. We'll try to find out if he's injured. Trainers have not looked at him that I have, have seen. I think it's a coach's decision. Macon squares up in the lane and sticks it. Well, he's having a big first half. 14 points for Mark Macon. He may be on his way to another big night against Rutgers. And you're right about squaring up. When he squares up to the basket, his set has his feet and legs under him. He's a good shooter. It's when he forces the shot that he misses a lot. And Harden's going to get picked up with a cheap foul right here. Don't see Temple players commit very many of those. 16 foul charge for Temple. Our next telecast for Lenny 10 Conference basketball will be Thursday night when Temple travels to Washington, D.C. to take on George Washington. Thursday at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, Temple and George Washington will be at the Smith Center. Our strict one. Minute 25 left in first half action here. Substitution for Temple. Chris Lovelace is in the ball game now. And he has hardly seen any time this year. He's played a total of 15 minutes in the first 10 games for Temple this year. And there's a guy who had significant time last year. Yeah, Lovelace was a highly recruited player out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. He got hurt last year. He had some knee problems, but's come in. But again, John Chaney likes to go with the set lineup, and he's had great success with that. Returns to the Rutgers line. Rutgers going to shoot their first free throws of the game here. Earl Duncan will go to the line. He has six points tonight. A 6'4 senior from Los Angeles. Transfer from Syracuse. He and Hughes transferred together from Syracuse. And since they've come here, last year they had some chemistry problems, definitely. And he just got going at the Atlantic 10 tournament. This year, with just with the injuries, if they can stay healthy and practice, you'll have a good ball club in a, in a few weeks. Eight points now for Duncan. Temple by 15 with a minute 10 left in the first half as Harden clears the timeline. Kilgore. Macon. Oh, there's that little squared up jump shot again, and he has 16 first half points. Well, he gets up in a hurry. And I'll tell you, folks out there, he is playing against Michael Jones, and Michael Jones is a very good defender, and Mark Macon's just breaking him down one-on-one. -on -one. Macon has hit five out of eight shots in the first half of this ball game. He's a quick jumper. When he starts up, he gets up in a hurry, and he's 6'5". When he gets to the top of his jump, you better be up high to keep up with it. Ryder kicks it off to Duncan, takes it into traffic, and we've got a foul call. I think they got Michael Harden for his third. Harden's to one of the officials. He took a push. It's a little unusual. John Cheney's going to let Harden stay in there and draw three fouls in the first half. Or has let him stay in, I should say. Well, right here, Michael Harden's trying to come back. There's just using his uh, hands instead of moving your feet defensively. You push those hands out, the referee's going to get you every time. But you know what I think is funny? I never have thought this is fair. The centers can go down there, and it looks like the World Wrestling Federation, and nothing gets called. One guard touches the other guard, boom, you got a foul. Yeah, I guess it's because it's on the open floor and the referee can see. I like when they let each other go, play physical, good, clean basketball, and the officials should just let them play. I love the wars inside. Rebounded by Spears. 16-point lead to Temple. 25 seconds left and a half, and the Owls may get the last shot. Kilgore faces Smith out near the timeline. 18 seconds left in the half. Harden comes out to get it. 15 seconds left in the half. Harden took a peek at the clock. Duncan's out with him. Harden trying to shake loose, get some room. Now they've got it in the hands of Mark Macon. He goes to work on Smith. Made away jumper. No good that time. And Jones has the rebound. Will they get the shot away? No. They don't get it off in time. And that thing came reasonably close for the type of shot it was. We're at halftime. And Rutgers off to a 10 to 2 lead. Now down by 16 at halftime. Temple leading Rutgers 44-28. We'll be back with halftime activity.
Rutgers is great. Just ask anybody. It's exciting. I love it. Oh, the campus is beautiful. I think it's outstanding. The education you get here is exceptional. The faculty is great. A Rutgers degree is definitely going to mean a lot once I graduate. I really like Rutgers. I'm having a great time here. It's the best experience I've ever had. I would definitely recommend Rutgers to anybody who wants a good education. And you're enjoying it. Again, Rutgers got it off to a great start tonight. They jumped out to a 10 to 2 lead. Donnell Lumpkin knocked down the first shot of the game, a three point try. But after 10 to 2, Temple took off, and it's been all Temple. Yeah, and that's the problem. Rutgers wants to shoot the ball from the outside. Donnell Lumpkin, their best shooter, didn't get it off. Earl Duncan can't get it off. Frank Carter. But let's give some credit to Temple's matchup zone. They take away a lot of passing angles in that zone defense. Yeah, the reality of the game of basketball is it's really tough to live with a three point shot. Yeah, especially when Temple knows that they've scattered Rutgers. They're packing it in. Everybody is in a three-second area. They are saying, Rutgers, you shoot the basketball. If you score, we'll come out. And in the first half, Rutgers didn't shoot the ball. Mark Macon having another big night against Rutgers. I mentioned he's averaged 29 his last four games against the Scarlet Knights. 16 in the first half here tonight. He's had big nights against a lot of people, but he seems to be picking on Rutgers a little extra here. Well, he's been getting it going. Especially when they play this man-to-man, -man, he gets a little bit better shot. Uh, rumor was that he was falling out of the first round in the NBA, so maybe he's heard those rumors and wants to go back out because there's a lot of money at the end of the rainbow. And he really seems to be getting confidence in his shooting back. Maybe that shot selection, but confidence must have something to do with it. Yeah, and Vic Carstarfin, his point guard, his teammate, is doing a good job getting the basketball to where he wants it. And when they're clearing out, you're not seeing the double teams that you once saw because Donald Hodge in the middle, Vic Carstarfin, and Mick Kilgore now scoring the basketball. So if those other guys are going to hurt you, you got to play making straight up, and that's a problem. We still have no word on Keith Hughes. He sat down with 12 minutes left in the first half. We haven't seen him on the floor. Yeah, I don't understand that because they need Keith Hughes, especially scoring 20 points a game, the leading scorer. Rutgers needs points desperately. I'm sure there's some problem. We'll hopefully find out at halftime. Again, we are at halftime here at McGonagall Hall in Philadelphia. And the Owls of Temple playing exceedingly well now. Up by 16 over Rutgers, and we'll be back. And Bob Wenzel didn't want to risk the third, so he kept him down for those last 12 minutes. We are at halftime. Temple in front of Rutgers, 44-28 here at McConnell Hall in Philadelphia. And at halftime, let's go to the court. Join colleague Ed Stefanski. I have Dr. Peter Lee, of course, the president of Temple University. And Peter, what team Temple shows up? Some games are great, some games, who knows? Highlights are being brought to you by Coors. We'll take a look at what Rutgers got started with and didn't get enough of. A three-point shot this time Earl Duncan had. Well, at least they saw some inside movement they use, and he knocks it back outside. they got to get the basketball inside that zone first. We'll see Mark Strick with a nice lob pass here by Vic Carstarthen. He's always setting it all up, looking for him. He looks away. You see his eyes not looking at Strickland, and Strickland gets the nice percentage shot. Perhaps the most spectacular play of the first half right there. He's the best athlete on the floor, definitely Mark Strickland of Temple. Macon, of course, came up big with 16 points for the Temple Owls in the first half, and now at halftime, Temple leading by those 16 over Rutgers. 